Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, before I get into this, because last time it seemed like it was an issue on last time's uh, last video that I made similar to this, people were you know wondering if this is a forecast. This is not a forecast, this is just speculation. Um, I'm gonna make it clear this time. I think it's still too early to make forecasts about winter. I am not making a forecast about winter. There's a big difference between a forecast and speculation. This is just speculating what could happen and why, you know, what impacts, what, what summer, what, you know, what, what impacts could it have? Um, it's not a forecast though, because that's not what I'm saying will happen. It's just showing you what may happen, what the analogs are showing. So, uh, there, that's what I'm saying about that. Um, the second thing I want to say is consider subscribing. It's a red subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, that's what it's going to look like. Click the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for doing so. I really appreciate it. So I would really love it if you guys would hit that subscribe button. And the reason I'm doing this video, uh, what impacts will a wet summer have on winter snowfall? Uh, last time it was what, you know, the temperatures will have on the temperatures in the winter. The reason I'm doing this is popular demand. Many people have emailed me and left comments saying they want more of these videos. So I decided to do another one. So uh, here we go. Let's move on. So this is whoa. Okay, so this is. I'm not sure if these uh, these pictures are 100% in order because uh, a little bit there's so many of them that they got a little bit confused up, and I forgot to fix it in the last second. But now since I forgot already started the video, I don't want to pause it. So I apologize if that happens. But you can see these are May through August. So this is basically. Um, I was considering at the beginning. Um, this was pretty hard. This video was actually around two hours because. <clears throat> took me two hours to make because well, <clears throat> it was basically okay so i was considering doing you know maybe the analogs instead of may to august from march to may uh basically you know because we already know we had a very wet spring so uh, anal find historical springs that have been very wet and see what the winter's outcome was but i decided to do may through august and may is technically not summer but i still left it in because may is already historically historical i mean already is in the in our past so technically it is history but um it is uh it is it was very wet it was very wet so i decided to leave that in since we already know may is gonna be wet and we still have june july and august june has also been very wet so far and is, is expected for july and august to be fairly wet across the east central part so i tried comparing those years so if it was very wet across the east coast but dry here, I didn't use the analog gear. I only used analog gears that were very similar to what's going to happen this year. So, we see I picked out... Um, these years are actually not years that I found um, with wet summers. These are years that there were cool summers. Remember last year, you know, a couple days, last video, I did those cool temperatures. Those were those years, and but I just clicked instead of air temperature, I just did precip. And you could see where the blue is, it's 50 millimeters to 100 millimeters above average. And you can see it's not really nothing special. It's dry here or warm here. Just a typical year or typical anomaly, I guess, from all these years. Nothing surprising. But if you go to their May, the May of those years, you could see the May was very wet, just like this year's May. And uh, so, you know, that leads me to think that maybe this year will be like this, you know, similar to this. And uh, since May was very, very wet, especially across the central U.S., I remember that uh, the Mississippi was flooding because it was all this rain that was falling in this uh, in these areas where it flows into the Mississippi, so that was, uh, you know, that was a a very wet, wet May, and then now we go into those years, okay, that's, see, that's one of the slides that I forgot to take out, um, we go into the, so see these years, now we go into the winter months of those years, so yes, it has gone up by one because it ends in March, so this now needs to be in 1982, and it's just plus one year, but it's that same uh, following winter of that, and you could see above average, very above average snow or rain. I mean, California, so probably snow in the higher elevations of precip in the, in the west, or the, the extreme west, and then fairly wet across the north and the south, but also um, no extremes. So during the winter, I want to keep in mind it is oh, it is very uh, it is harder to find um, to find anomalies as great as they are in summer because there's no thunderstorms and in order to produce a great anomaly in temperatures you would have to be it would have to be a fairly large system and those um you know those happen but not not you know too many in a row so the anomalies during winter are harder to find but still 
that's what happened. Now I went out to find that these are just basically what I was listing my, to myself so I wouldn't lose track of the years. I found a bunch of years where they look similar in terms of precip um, to this year's outlook and what already has happened. So you can see 2015, 2014, 2010, 2009, 2008, 2004. And then as we went back, the years kind of scattered and we didn't really see many that were, uh, you know, significantly uh, as, you know, the, the most happened in the past couple of years. And then back here, I only went back to 1990 because I was, uh, it was taking a lot of time. And this time you can see I did CPC soil moisture. And the reason for that is because this didn't give as much of an effect as this did. And this is basically showing the soil anomaly and uh, the, basically how wet it is. So obviously the more above average, the more moisture there is, the more below is more below. So you could see here in the central US, very wet and in the west, wet, which is what's forecasted to be. So May to August of those years, it was very wet. So um, that's what's supposed to be this year. It's supposed to be very wet this year, according to the Climate Prediction Center, which I'll show you in just a minute. So. Um, what is this? Okay, so this is just the May to August, but the, with the regular, um, fuck it, with the rather regular, um, or just a different, just the precipitation, GPCC, um, instead of the soil moisture. So this is the soil moisture, and this is the same thing I was using earlier, so people wouldn't complain. And you could see uh, that it's, it's, it's very similar. It's just a little bit more enhanced on the uh, GC, GPCC precip because it goes by increments of 10 here it goes by increments of 30 so it's a little bit more uh, detailed on this one but i decided to use a soil moisture since it gave out more um effect of what i was trying to show and it was simpler to read so let's go uh on now to the winter months of those years so again it has went up by 1 2016 2015 2011 2010 and that's because when you, you got to put in that website they're saying to, to end that time period of december to february with the on with the new year so this is 2015 winter but it ends in 2016 and you know you get the point so you could see that it pretty much directly correlated with an above average uh above average winter for these years so this is not just one you know fluke year these are a bunch of years and very similar areas um so again the west here, over here, above average, the north central US, the Midwest, the east, also definitely not dry. Only areas that could be were, were a little bit drier was the west and the south and Florida. <clears throat> Fuck you, but again, Florida does not usually typically see too much snow, if at all, any snow, especially the southern part, never sees snow. So that's really doesn't, you know, affect our predictions too much. So at this point, um, Again, I said predictions, but this is not a prediction. This is just kind of showing you what these analogs are showing. So it's just interesting. I like interesting. I just like, you know, seeing what could ha happen and seeing, look at the history and see what the analogs are showing us. And this is what they're showing us that springs or springs, yes, yeah, springs where, or summer, sorry, summers where it is above average for the central and western US uh, and a little bit drier maybe in the south, these bunch of years typically tend to produce an above average winter with precip. Now here's the t hard question. Is this all snow? Is this an above average snow? Because there is no snow category on that map. There is no above average snow. It's just precip. So it could have been very warm and just rainy. That's See, this is the catch, guys. Fuck you. This is the catch. It doesn't have to be more snow. Um, it could be, this could definitely be more snow. You know, these uh, cities could have definitely logged more snow in these uh, years. Uh, like, say, St. Louis could be above average. Or it just could have been a very warm winter with above average rain. And that still is going to give it a plus because it's above average. Now, some people would be saying, oh, it's definitely rain because soil moisture. Snow, when it falls, it doesn't get into the soil, so it stays dry. So this is, um, so this is definitely rain since it's uh, measurable by the soil. When snow falls, the soil doesn't get wet. It freezes. Well, to that I have to say, um, well, we, we, you know, it's not necessarily the case because we could, you know, it could snow a lot and then it could melt and that would affect the soil moisture. So, and the I don't know how often these soil moisture uh, the readings are taken. I'm assuming uh, they're just averages per month. So I'm take they're probably taking every day as an, a total for to an average to out to a month. So the video is gonna pause right now, and we are back. So. 
Uh, as I was saying, the the measurements are taken frequently and they're averaged out to a monthly average, and then they're you know obviously averaged out to a yearly average. So these years, um, this is what it led to. And at the okay, so I did have a climate prediction center picture. I was going to include a climate prediction center uh, picture of what's to come instead of in, in, in terms of pre But I'm telling you guys, it's just going to be a, a green area over here in the west and the centrally west. Don't believe me. Um, well, search up Climate Prediction Center, Seasonal Outlook. Um, they now have June, July, August, but, uh, no, they have July, August, September, but try finding the June, July, August one. That one is the one we're worried about, um, since it's already, uh, the summer solstice passed, or so now they're on to the next phase. Uh, so you can see, if you search it up, it's gonna be green in these areas, so... Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Consider subscribing. Just wanted to share this with you. And I will catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.